Hey guys, Paul Chopper here, and today we're going to do a guide for a person that shouldn't need any introduction, the Cowboy of Agora. Murdoch is a fury and intellect carry that can snipe his play from afar, as well as getting close and personal to do some heavy damage. We're going to be looking at his play stats, how to play him, and my overview of this character. Like all my guides and decks, if you enjoy them, subscribe and then give me ideas on what to do next in the comments below is always appreciated. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Being a carry, Murdoch's health is rather low, and it's honestly up to you how tanky you want to make him. Personally, I wouldn't add too much extra health on, especially if you have a blink charm to help you escape. Lifesteal, I feel, is a better bet in the current meta. The more health you build, the less damage you will output, after all, and that's what a carry is meant to build. Mana isn't a problem for Murdoch at all. Nothing takes too much mana up, so the 900 given is plenty enough. Besides, you would rather focus on the damage anyway. His attack speed does increase with each level all the way up to 140%, which is a lot, so not much extra on attack speed front is needed with cards. The basic and ability armor are quite high actually compared to casters. 46 for basic and ability has 30.5 armor. I wouldn't really build any extra armor on him either. His basic attack scales well with him too, 2 per each hero level, with a 1.35 second cooldown. Probably his most important ability is his move a lot. It's a shield that you can aim and push targets away. It hardly does any damage and a low mana cost. The biggest issue is its cooldown, so you want to upgrade this quite quickly. You can almost halve the cooldown from 21 seconds to 12. The Spark Shock ability does a decent amount of damage. Late game it is even weaker than your basic attack however, but when hitting an opponent it shreds their basic armour for a few seconds. This is great to initiate a fight doing extra damage to your opponent, it also helps to wave clear too. His static track has been changed somewhat from Legacy. It's a mine that now roots an enemy in place, the max being 2 seconds when level 4. When placing down it takes 3 and a quarter seconds for the mine to fully activate and then it becomes lethal. Putting around fog walls or choke points help you survive or attack an unsuspecting target. Don't throw it down pointlessly, it does have a 20 second cooldown. His ultimate is the long arm of the law an ability where he can shoot anywhere on the map and is perfect to pick up those kills. It goes through all objects and has to be accurate. It also ignores all armour so does a core damage when fully upgraded can be very nasty. Now for his early game what pretty much goes is for you to focus on last hits and nothing else. Grab wards and keep your lane safe. I don't try to push the lane unless I'm with a good support and I know we can take the tower or even get an early kill. His ultimate is amazing to help you farm up. Getting the odd kill from within the first 15 minutes of the game can be a game changer later on. For upgrade wise, I unlock the move along ability straight away just in case of an early gank, then the buckshot and your mine next. I just focus between buckshot and move along though. Damage for buckshot early game is great, and the cooldown needs to be reduced on the move along ability, so I'll grade it for sure, and the mine goes last. When placing your mine, you want to put it somewhere in the middle of the lane. You ask why? Well, if getting ganked or simply pushed, using this as a safety barrier is great. If they avoid it, simply use your move along ability and force them into the mine if it comes to it. I never focus on getting crit early game, keeping it to damage and attack speed. It's great for farming. I see no point adding 8% crit to that. I wait till I have enough card points to add a good amount on with another card. Flash 5 Piston is my personal favourite early game card for him. If a lot of action is going on the field, be resilient to stay in your lane unless the wave is pushed up and everyone else is on the other side of the map, then you do need to join in. That's why having his universal ult is fantastic. Your team may be annoyed but most of the time it's them overextending, they will be thankful once you come online and start kicking some ass later on. Plus you're weak, a single misstep and you could be dead. I will see how the other carry is doing as well, if I'm out farming them then I'm clearly doing something right. Now the mid game is where you can move around more freely, helping other lanes where you clear and being a part of those team fights. The big thing for a carry is to stay with your team. The amount of times I see a carry in the jungle or pushing too far into a team fight, you have to realise that you can get obliviated in seconds and don't blame your team for it. They let them initiate and peel away, even just a few hits on a target may be enough for you to turn the tide of the battle. Most of my builds are full glass cannon, meaning full damage, very little anything else. I feel very confident in my abilities with Murdoch and even so having life still being useful again, it does feel great. I mean you can even see me here soloing or prime with a full build. I'm even scoring guys in a few hits, it's kind of insane. Yes, I have quite the advantage over them, but that's because I focused on farming early game and didn't care about anything else. It may get boring, but that means you can help secure the win later on. All that carries over to the late game. If all goes well, you should be one of the first to hit that 60 card point mark. 
room in a map, not trying to take 1v1s on, but waiting for that big engagement. The last thing you want is a carry not to be in that big team fight. That's what they are there for. It really annoys me when I see a team fight happening 40 plus minutes into a game to see the carry somewhere else on the map. So my overview of Murdoch, right now he's one of the best if not the best carry in the game, very much like Legacy. He's always fantastic all the way around and his overall kit and abilities can help him escape targets and finish them off before they get close again. I will also be making a deck build of him hopefully next week. But anyway guys, thank you very much for checking out this video and I'll see you next time.